you are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Going to have a good podcast for you today as Drew Morgan, the... <laughs> Oh, man, the guy that's a character, and for those of you who remember him well as the wide receiver at Arkansas from around 2012 to 2016, uh, fiery guy. He's going to be joining us and to talk about Arkansas, talk about himself, where he's at, and also his brother Grant, of course, and the successes they're having. And looking forward to catching up with him, especially since he was a part of the last game that Arkansas had where they actually beat Auburn in 2015. So uh, always going to be good to catch up with him. But I wanted to start off with something that's not football, uh, because this is huge news uh, before we have Drew, and it's about last night where Jordan Walsh, the number seven recruit in the 2022 class in basketball, mind you, announced his commitment to Arkansas. That's two top 10 players committed to Arkansas in the 2022 class with now Jordan Walsh and Nick Smith. I feel weird. They're like, is this real? Is this a dream? No, it's true. Walsh's pledge likely gives Eric Musselman and the Razorbacks a top three recruiting class alongside Duke and Kentucky. It's a pretty good company to be in. Uh, Jordan Walsh says the difference was the coaching staff and especially Coach Musselman. It's a staff that has NBA experience. The fans are wild, and it's the only game in town. The program competes for championships. I want to win a national championship while I'm there. He chose Arkansas over Texas, while he also visited Memphis, Arizona State, and Kansas. He also said, Coach Musselman thinks I should only be there for a year. They have a plan for me from day one until the end of the season, and that was important to me. They have a huge plan on a whiteboard that was the size of a wall. To know that they believe in me and that much meant a lot. Their plan for me is to come and play impactful minutes, to play play through four and utilize my versatility. The NIL was a factor, and it's nice to know that it's there, but my goal is to be in the NBA. Six foot seven, small forward. He's from Texas, but went up to link year prep in Missouri. Number seven recruit in the ESPN 100 and is the number two player at his position as well. Has a 41 inch vertical leap, a seven foot three wingspan, and is one of the best two way players in the high school game as of right now. He's one of five commitments with Nick Smith, who are both, of course, top 10. And also ESPN 100 four stars in Darian Ford, Barry Dunning, and Joseph Pinion. That gives Arkansas the number two recruiting class in the country. Holy balls. <laughs> like, I, I am still, like, not – like it's just wild. It's absolutely wild that Eric Musselman has been able to do this at Arkansas. And because not just saying that, like, him recruiting at a high level is impossible, but – the fact is, is that he had such a stigma of saying, oh, well, he just goes after transfers. You know, that's all they care about. And, uh, you know, the rest of it, they don't, they don't really care about. And and then obviously he's not, he's proving that whole theory wrong. But I'm not putting expectations on anything. But that could, that 2022 season, that could be the best basketball season with the most talent that Arkansas has had in a long time. I don't think that's sugar, or putting too much emphasis on it or sugar coating it or anything. That's nasty. That is a nasty, nasty class that could end up making Arkansas put them into that next level because they made the Elite Eight last year with really only one bona fide NBA player. Uh, Some guys that could end up uh, as they develop getting into the NBA, but also with not that deep of a bench as far as other talented guys too. This year we know what the expectation is and how much talent is on the team, but then next year it's just like it's getting better and better. Like if you're a Razorback fan, start buying your season tickets now. Just start start looking at trips uh, to Houston in 2023 for the Final Four. Start booking Airbnbs because this could be a very very good possibility that Arkansas not only will be in the Final Four, but could win a national championship. You you heard me correctly. This type of class with Eric Musselman at Arkansas will be good enough to win a national championship in 2022 and 2023. That almost sends chills down your spine. That almost makes you feel like it's not hope, it's not homerism or fandom, it's it's real. 
I mean, you have the top class with Kentucky and Duke. You know what Musselman can do as far as his coaching ability, not just recruiting, but his coaching too. The Arkansas Razorbacks can win a national championship in 2022 and 2023. Ah, oh, man. Doesn't it feel good? Jordan Walsh is going to be a big-time player. See, watch his highlights. You'll see exactly why everyone's so high on him. Freakishly athletic. Doesn't really have a weakness to his game. He's already built like a truck. And he's still got another year to play. So, he can only get better from there. But, man, that's just... It's exciting to be a Razorback fan right now, folks. Soak it in. Enjoy it while you can. We're going to keep this going and have some fun. We're going to have Drew Morgan... On the other side of the break, but first I've got to tell you about Built Bar and how they have so many different amazing flavors to choose from. It's convenient, it's healthy, it, ta- it tastes good, it- it's everything. Like I love the fact that they have my favorite cookies and cream, which is amazing. Even salted caramel, big caramel guy over here. And the best thing about it, it has 17 to 18 grams of protein with calories ranging only from 130 to 180. And with the, all the amazing flavors, you can always find something just for you. So if you go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15, you'll get 15% off your first order. Again, they go to builtbar.com slash locked on and enter in the promo code locked15 and you'll be able to get a great deal from builtbar.com. Be sure to check it out. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. Right now, let's go to the phone lines as we welcome in Drew Morgan, a former Arkansas wide receiver who was also on the last team that Arkansas had that beat Auburn back in 2015, made a lot of big plays in that. And he's also a coach up in Elkins. For those of you who know in the Northwest Arkansas area, I'm pretty familiar with that. He's also up there coaching, trying to follow his dream, but he joins us on the phone lines right now. Drew, appreciate you joining us this afternoon, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I'm curious, though, because I know that you're coaching. Tell us about that, because a lot of people may not uh, realize that you're actually in the coaching game now. Yeah, I uh, you know went through two years in the NFL and thought that it would probably be the best thing for me is just to uh, give back to those young athletes. Um, and I started out in Greenwood. Moved that next year to Fayetteville, coached uh, one year under Casey Dick, and then got an opportunity to lead an offense as the offensive coordinator at school in Oklahoma. Um, went to the third round of the playoffs, and unbelievable experience uh, for my first year. And then now, my fourth year, I find uh, myself up here at Elkins High School as the special teams coordinator and co-OC with uh, Zach Watson. Well, very nice. Yeah, is it something you always thought about doing, or is it something that once uh, once you felt like you were done playing, you're like, you know what, this is something I feel like I could do? <laughs> uh, football came really easily uh, to me. Um, and IQ, knowledge, um, the game, the aspect of how it's played um, really, really came simple to me. Um, the physicality part of it, yes, you know, that, that, was, that was definitely sought after, and I worked really hard for that, but um, you know, I was trying to find ways to be an influence in other people's life. Um, and, you know, playing football was something that I always dreamed about going to the NFL, you know, doing that. I never dreamed about being a Hall of Famer. You know, yes, yeah, set your dreams are big. My big dream was to get to the NFL, to play in the NFL, to make a team. And I did that. Well, after that, I was like, okay, what's next? Well, I want to influence as many people as I could. It was never about the money. It was never about the fame. It was never about the glory. I wanted to see those around me succeed as well. Why not take it back to high school? Yeah, then see, that was the kind of the interesting thing about it is because, you know, some people just have football built into their DNA. You know, it's like it's just what they do. It's what they breathe. It's what they sleep with. I mean, it's just it's all about football for some of these people. And, you know, finding a <laughs> career in coaching, too, and being able to influence people's lives in that, in that same way. You know, it, it's not for everybody, yeah. but you definitely have to be a specific type of person to do it. Yeah, it's definitely not for everybody. I mean, uh, and I can kind of relate to that as well. After I got out of the league, um, I spent about eight months unemployed um, just to take a break. Take a break and get my, get my mind right. I think mental health is definitely something um, that is, you know, in the light right now. Um, but I took it when nobody else was taking it. I, I you know, I'm, I'm not much of one of those guys that, you know, post things and, wants to be flashy and start a trend and start a movement 
um, because, you know, I, I do believe in the coaching world and as, as a player, um, you know, if you're good at something, people will recognize it. There's no need to talk about it. Um, and the same thing with mental health. Like, if you need to take it, take it, do with, do with it as you please um, and move on. Um, there's no need to, you know, kind of put it out there in the limelight for, you know, people to recognize you. But I think through how I handled it, um, there's been other people that have, have seen my story and seen my, uh, you know, commitment to myself and have done the same thing without, you know, bringing others along in, in a negative way. Uh, so that seven or eight months that really I was unemployed, I didn't know if I want to get back into football or not. So came to Jesus meeting about two or three times a, a week <laughs> <laughs> and realized that the best opportunity for me um, to be successful and to lead others to success was uh, to get back in the ranks of high school football. So what were some of the things that you learned specifically while you were in an Arkansas Razorback? Because obviously playing at the college level, uh, you had some great moments, and we already know your story about coming from Greenwood and working your way up on the roster that way. Uh, what were some of the things you took from your experience at Arkansas that you've been implementing in your coaching philosophies too? Uh, you know, the one-day-at-a-time mentality um, is something that, you know, is very cliche, but to this day it stands very, very true. Um, if you try to win every single rep, every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year, you'll find yourself at the highest competitive level there is. Um, you know, you might not win every single rep, but if you have that mindset of the next rep is the most important rep, your attitude and your effort will never change. It'll never defer. It'll always be the same or harder than the next rep. Um, that was one thing that I took along the way. Um, I've kind of created my own special teams saying of, you know, chaos kills. I want to, I want to, I want to be chaotic in special teams. Um, so hopefully, you know, the, the, the coaches that I have been under and played for, um, you know, one thing that you know I really wanted to make a difference was in special teams. Uh, so that's kind of one thing that I've kind of created um, and done on my own. I'm sure there's someone out there who has done that before, but um, I haven't heard it. So um, that, that's kind of something new. But that one rep every single day, one rep every single month, every single week, that's, that's kind of something that I've, I've carried on to um, Elkins. We're speaking with Drew Morgan, former Razorback wide receiver here on Out of Bounds, 103.7 The Buzz. So, Drew, looking at uh, this year's Razorback football team, I know you still follow them, obviously, with your brother still a part of the team as well. Uh, they really got off to a hot start, obviously, having two tough losses this past two weeks, getting ready for Auburn this week. Just what have you made of the job that Sam Pittman and the Razorback football team has done so far this year? Yeah, and I, I'm, not, I'm not one to judge somebody um, by their wins and by their losses. I, I judge people – um, really by how they treat people. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, when you walk away from somebody, you're going to ask yourself, hey, how was that guy? You know, did he treat me with respect? You know, is that someone I could sit down and drink a beer with or something? Um, yes, all of those things, Matt Sam Pittman. Um, I, think he's, I think he's doing a great job. I mean, I've never been a head coach in college football, so I don't really know what's a good job what's not a bad job or what, what is not a, a good job. But what I have seen is that he has guys – through every second of every game. Um, and they have that mentality of the next rep is the most important rep. And that's cool coming from, um, you know, a former player, um, because whenever we were playing, I know you didn't hear a lot of that coming from uh, former players that, you know, were asked about uh, a Bielema. You know, the next rep is the most important rep. Yeah, it was win the day, all that kind of stuff. But the cool thing was about with, with Pittman and what he's doing now is that he's got – guys in the locker room and he's telling them you're all that we need and he's proven it to them day in and day out and so he's earning their respect he's running through a brick wall for these guys and in, in return these guys are running through a brick wall um for him so there's really nothing that can stop these hogs other than themselves and i think they realize that you know the only ones in their way are themselves and if that's the true you know being then I mean, I think the sky's the limit for these guys, even with two learning moments from Georgia um, and Ole Miss. You know, I don't see those as losses, and I hope nobody sees them as losses because none of those, loop, those, those losses are 
responsible for each other. I think they're learning moments, and if you continue to grow, you're going to be a really dangerous team come later down the stretch. We'll continue our discussion with Drew Morgan here in just a second, but first, back and better than ever, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds and props and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website now or use your mobile device to sign up today for 50% at welcome bonus on your first deposit using promo code locked on to receive your bonus. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So check it out at BetOnline.ag where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. Well, Drew, you were a part, uh, just as well as Sam Pittman, of that team that last beat Auburn in 2015, and it was a wild one. You were a part of a lot of wild games, but that was definitely one of them. Quadruple overtime. Uh, you made a lot of plays in that game, too. Take us back to that game and just you being in that moment and having the four overtimes against Auburn. What were some of the things that stood out to you that really you remember the most about that game? <laughs> oh, this is awesome. This is going to be funny. Okay, so that first half, um, I remember going up to a couple of my buddies on the team at receiver, and I was like, why the heck have they not thrown me the ball yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking, why have I not touched the ball? It's been the first half. I need to touch the ball. Second half comes rolling around. I think I might have touched it once. And then we go into overtime, and I'm thinking, all right, you know what? If God's saving this opportunity for me or not putting my name in the coach's head to throw me the ball, then so be it. When it comes to me, I'm going to make the most of my opportunity. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of selfish in that that game because I was like, it's Auburn, you know, it's Gus Malzahn. This guy recruited me out of high school. I committed to him um, go, whenever he was at Arkansas State. Yeah, I'm a little pissed off. I want to play a little fire and a little juice in me because I wanted to beat him. I wanted to show, hey, you know, you made a mistake by transferring to Arkansas State and leaving me behind. Um, so I was a little fiery, um, a little upset during the first half. Second half rolls around, threw the ball to me once, got a little bubble screen. Um, and then fourth fourth quarter ended, and I was like, hey, I'm still fresh, coach. I think you should throw me the ball. So he was like, good, okay. So I got a couple more catches in overtime, and I guess the rest was history. I think the coolest moment was it wasn't even the play that I dove and scored on and did the you know, twirl top and that one. I, the, the play that I remember most was a two-point conversion to seal the game. Um, I, I just had caught – a two-point conversion or, or like a fourth and three on the goal line, and then we come out in a jumbo set and we fake a fullback dive and pitch it to Cody Walker going to the left. And I remember seeing – and I'm, I'm lined up on the left side on the ball, and I remember seeing a corner. His eyes are on me, so I know he's playing man. And he's, his name, last name was Carlton. He, I can't remember what his first name is, but he still plays in the league to this day. He's about 6'5", long, linky dude. I'm thinking, dude, this guy's got me locked down. Good thing we're running the ball. So I take him, and we go inside, and I crack this linebacker. Well, a lot of guys have said, don't go take one to get one because that guy might fall off and make the play. Well, I knew watching film, you know, if his eyes are on me, he's going to stick on me like stink on poo, like white on rice, like, you know, you could say all these <laughs> metaphors and similes, but that's, that's what it'll be. And I knew it, and I believed it 110%. So I went in there, and I cracked the linebacker. Cody Walker got the pitch, took it outside, walked in the end zone untouched. Um, and that was my most fond memory because it was a learning moment for me that I actually taught myself is knowledge is power, right? No, it's not. Using your knowledge is power. And I used what I knew about that defender, and, and I took it and I applied it. And I always, from there on, I was like, always believe in yourself. Always believe in yourself. Always believe in yourself. And I've taken that one play, and I use it as an example every day. It don't matter how big, how fast, how strong you are. It's about what you know. Knowledge is power. Right, and all my kids in class say no. Using your knowledge is power. So I'm, I'm, I'm applying that to every day, um, you know, classroom stuff, and, and on the field at Elkins as well. And you know, I've, I've really, I miss playing football. But the one game that stood out the most was was this Auburn game. Well, and it's funny that you brought that up because I felt like after that game too and after that win, it really got you guys going that season where you had a strong finish. We know about the Ole Miss game and the Hunter Henry heave and uh, you know the great performances. Yeah. It almost felt like that once that win happened, even though you guys may have got off to a rough start or a rougher start than what you wanted, it seemed like everything just started clicking right after that, especially offensively. 
Yes, yeah, and it, it did start to click, and that kind of goes back to what I said earlier about you know the Georgia and the Ole Miss learning opportunities. Um, we, as a team and coaching staff at Arkansas, believed in learning over losing, and if you have that mindset of learning, then you will continue to grow, and the tide will turn, and you will start to turn over and see you know, the grass is greener on the other side. The cream rises to the top. So I think that's the kind of stage that they're in right now with Pittman. Um, you know, being he's got a head coaching experience here, and you know, the players are starting to figure it out. You know, what I love is that they've got an amazing group of seniors that have been through a lot, and they've learned a lot. So I think they just piggyback off those seniors, and those seniors continue to bring those juniors, sophomores, and freshmen under their wing. And they're going to be unstoppable in the next two or three years. And I, and I don't see why they couldn't in one. Well, and you bring up the seniors. And obviously your brother Grant is having a great year and had a great year last year and is, is doing a great job there too. And I know you're in constant contact with him and everything. But, yeah, I just always think about what, what he's been through in his tenure at Arkansas, you know, going through coaching changes and all those things to really finding a spot to where he can excel at as well. Uh, I mean, it's the fact that he came back this this year too was was really great for Arkansas, but obviously uh, it was great for him as well. So you got to be able to look at him and just be like, man, he he's kind of went on a journey similar to mine, coming from Greenwood, finding his spot on the team, and being really successful at it. Yeah, what's funny is I'm now known as Grant Morgan's brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I texted him that the other night. There was a there's a Channel Five News report and recording and it was me diving into the end zone against Auburn they were talking about the Auburn game coming up this weekend and the the sportscaster was like there's there's uh Grant Morgan score I mean I mean that's Grant Morgan's older brother and I was like I recorded it I said it to Grant I was like dude look I'm your older brother they don't even know me anymore that's awesome <laughs> and it's kind of funny be- it's kind of funny because from the get-go um whenever he was in high school and I and I started college um you know we had not seen each other in, in a while just because, you know, football season's pretty hectic, um, and it stays that way during the fall. But he started getting to college, and I got out, and I told him, do not listen to the critics. Do not listen to those people saying, you got a lot of, you got a lot of room to fill in, in, in Drew's shoes. You know, what, what's going to happen? And, he, you know, he took it. He put, put that little chip on his shoulder, and he told them exactly what me and my dad had told him as well. And it is – I've got my own shoes to fill, and they are bigger than Drew's. And from there on, he's done nothing but made us proud because he lived up to it. He didn't talk a whole lot. He was honest when he did, and his play has has really proven to be true. I mean, he has filled shoes that were way bigger than mine. He's on a completely different side of the ball, and he's uh, you know he's got that little extra boost of the NIL too, <laughs> which yeah. we never had whenever I played four years. I guess I was four years too late, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with that, and, that, and that's crazy. And that's we can end on that one. I was going to get your thoughts on it, anyways. What do you make of the NIL? I know you're probably a little upset. You're like, man, I could have made some money when I was playing too. But it seems like it's a really great thing, and seems to be working out for your brother too. Yeah, oh, no, I'm not mad at all. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. And um, you look at all the players from the past that you know, look back and say, man, if I had this NIL money, I'd be, you know, balling. I'd be making so much money. No one would ever heard of these people. And it's like, man, are you that selfish? Are you that selfish to be like, if I was an NIL, I'd be, you know, come on now. Like, be thankful. Be proud of these young men. Look where we came from. Uh, you know, the growth of this, you know, NCAA, SEC. I mean, there's a quarterback making over seven figures. Good Lord. I mean, this is awesome. This puts pressure on the NFL. I love it. I love when pressure meets pressure. Why? Because diamonds come out of it. I love it. And, that, and that's, that's part of it. And I think that's part of business that a lot of people don't realize. But I'm happy for those college kids making money because most of the time, I'm going to be honest with you, 99.9% of those college athletes, even with scholarships, can't afford rent, can't afford food, can't afford shoes, can't afford stuff for their parents to live happy. I mean, that's their way out, right? Well, why not keep giving it to them? They've earned it. You telling them you got to earn it four more years? No, that ain't cool because most of those guys don't even make it to the league. I don't even know the percentage, but it's tough, and they they deserve it. 
Yeah, very well put. Drew, we appreciate you joining us, man. Good luck the rest of the way in coaching. Good luck to Elkins the rest of the way as well. And uh, enjoy the game this Saturday, man. We'll be catching up with you. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Well, appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast.